Jay Shogren is another amazing member of our community. He's also known as Jason F. Shogren, or F and J. Shogren. He lives with his family in Centennial. He teaches environmental economics at the University of Wyoming, which is his alma mater. And he writes music, of course, and performs with his friends in Jay Shogren, Shanghai. He likes to ski and fish, too. Now, that's the end of the biography that Jay gave me. So I said to him this afternoon, didn't you also win the Nobel Prize? Jay won the Nobel Prize. He was on Al Gore's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, group of 2,000 scientists. He was party to the Nobel Prize. So uh, I, I, I was a little surprised. I mean, I know that if you are called F and J Shogren, maybe you don't want to lead with your Nobel Prize. But when I win a Nobel Prize, it's going to at least appear somewhere on my biography. <laughs> Jay's talk today is Wild Side Trips, the wonderful Jay Shogren. The IPCC won the Nobel Prize. We're party to the prize. Technically, me and 2,000 of my closest friends. <laughs> Just to clarify. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my wild side trips over the last three decades from music to economics to music, because many of you probably wonder how an economist can also be a musician. And you might be curious or, or not, but my question has always been over these last three years, how has a musician been an economist? So to really get an idea, let's talk about how we went from there to here, and then the middle ground that got us from there to here. So there, back in the late 70s, early 80s, we played punk polka in Minneapolis, and our main audience was blue-haired ladies of all sorts. And I had basically 100% music and 0% self-confidence. And today, I play 50% music for wild mountain men and women. And I have 150% confidence in what I do, whether I should or not, is another story. But I do. So what's the big difference and why economics? Well, when you think about being a scientist and an artist, you always have two baselines, an upper baseline and a, and a lower baseline. And for me, coming from Minnesota, the upper bass line was in music. And the upper bass line in Minnesota music is big. You got the Andrews sisters, you have his bobness, and you have his purpleness as defining what music is out of Minnesota. And I was just a tall, skinny kid, and that was no really uh, a way for me to think about it. So 25 years later, after going to 0% music and a 100% economics, I came away from it with a few things that I picked up and get uncomfortable, say yes a lot, and we'll go into a little bit of detail on these. Uh, the other two, um, don't let what you don't know embarrass what you do, we speak in our house Swedish or because it's me, it's Shogsvensk, which is a hybrid language of English, Spanish, and Swedish. And the idea is to get uncomfortable in this. And to get uncomfortable, the whole point is to take chances. Uh, we moved to Wyoming in 82. We moved to Sweden in 84. We moved back to Wyoming. We moved to Boone, North Carolina. We moved to Iowa. We moved to Yale. We moved to Wyoming. We moved back to Sweden. We moved back to Wyoming. We were pretty uncomfortable. We moved a lot. But it was well worth it, because every time we did it, we learned more and more about what we could do. Just say yes. I think I said yes to just about everything. You want to come work at the White House? Sure. You want to be on the IPCC? Yeah, that sounds really good. Well, I'm just too dumb to know at the time that there's all these really smart economists, and I'm not one of them. I was just the guy who said yes. And so I showed up, just like my mom. She said, show up, and I showed up. And I learned from lots of people who were way smarter than me, but you know, I wasn't intimidated like Bob Dylan intimidates me. So don't know, don't let what you don't know embarrass what you do. Uh, pretty much I said, well, I'm going to learn game theory. I learned game theory. I'm going to learn choice under risk and uncertainty. I learned that. I'm going to learn experimental economics. I didn't have any training in it. I just learned it. I never bothered to say, I can't do this. And so I just figured out how to ask questions, figure out that I'm not the best judge of the social value of my own ideas, that write, revise, revite, rev you got to actually work. And finally, the last thing, uh, which is not what economists teach you, is to buy high and sell low. 
Uh, typically, we try to give you the opposite advice if you're trying to make a living. Well, the best thing economics taught me was to ignore that and do the opposite. So why jump back in 24, uh, five years later? Well, there was a right brain revolution about a decade ago. Um, it wasn't a midlife crisis. It was a realization that the path economics was going on was towards trying to change econobots into people. Well, musicians have been doing this for millennia. So I started reading poetry. I joined the theater. I got uncomfortable. I started making recordings that you had to listen to. I started to go on tour with a bunch of crazy musicians, which we did this last spring, 5,000 miles. You know, most people, it's no big deal if you're a musician. I waited 30 years to do this. And this is the ragtag bunch of Wyo Americana folks. So this uh, Friday starts the Snowy Range Music Festival. Just say yes. Uh, if we actually sell out one of the days, they're the organizers are going to build a theater for it for full time. So buy your tickets. Okay? Like I say, buy high, sell low, get your life back. And if you have a chance for a second childhood, take it. Don't waste this one. Thank you. <laughs>